just be hitting some of the vendors here to give you an idea of what's waiting every Saturday until snow falls. Uh, these, these are the egg people and the chicken people. And she has everything here, all the products from her lovely chickens, but the chickens. Jason Rhodes, who is farmer par excellence. You not only grow asparagus, which is why we're here today, but you have muscadines, you have blueberries, on and on and on with the products that you grow. Yes, ma'am. So, asparagus is a fascinating vegetable, and I'd love for you to tell Cleveland County about how you grow it and what you do with it. I guess one of the first things that I think of when I think of asparagus um, that it's a lily. A lot of people don't know that. It, it is. It's a, it comes from the lily family like daylilies. Um, it, it offers some unique traits as far as uh, what you do and kind of what you see. Uh, right now, uh, we're filming and some folks are probably wondering in the background what we're looking at. Exactly. It's, it's, there's not a whole lot here. Um, exactly. So what we're doing right now, we are in the harvest. Um, we'll kind of show some examples throughout our, our interview here as to what we're looking at. Throughout the harvest, once the harvest is complete, then it becomes into the fern stage. Okay. Um, we'll pick a piece, kind of example here, what we're looking at. This crown in the top um, will open up to make a three to four foot plant. We have asparagus coming up. We want to know how we pick this. We've got a couple of different things going here. Right here was freeze damage. It's just simply where, just yellowed uh -huh. out, just simply oh, where the plant itself, uh, when it got below 32 degrees, just didn't make it. Um, you'll see here where we picked this morning. Um, the idea is how we try to regulate what we pick is we try to get a nine inch spear. So you can see there, we're probably about two inches till too short. Tomorrow that piece would be harvestable and marketable. Um, you know, oh, okay. everybody has uh, I guess everybody's taste buds are touched different and, and how, the, how the preparation of your asparagus, whether you're making it in soups and, and salads, whether you're eating it raw, whether you're making uh, stews with it, whether you're making casseroles, whether you're grilling it. I think that the, the diameter of the pieces when you're doing those different uh, things in the kitchen, I guess you'd say, as far as preparation goes, I think that's going to definitely make what size spears 
you want for what size spears that you're going to prepare and what you're going to try to do with them. Sure. This is what we, this is a little more than a pound. You can see the diameters we talked about sure. when you're 50%. Sure, you know, sure. something like that. And you um, can tell they're broken off because yes. the, the edges are jagged. Yes, that's right. And, and ultimately, um, you know, th this is a touch taller than what we like. But yesterday with the overcast, today we only probably picked off of an acre about 28 or so pounds. Uh -huh, very great. Well, thank you. You enjoy very much. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Calling all readers. It's time for you to be a hero. Hero. Transform your summer with the amazing power of books. Hero. Kids from everywhere are accepting the challenge and enjoying adventures, activities, and fun. Explore your favorite topics or discover something new. It's up to you. You can be the hero. So join your friends for games, movies, special events, and more all summer long at your library. Every hero has a story. Hi, I'm Steve Putnam, and I'd like to invite you to join me for the next Talk of the Town. Each week I get to meet with some of the most interesting people in Cleveland County. And each show is packed with information you need to know to stay connected to our community. From promoting upcoming events to discussing local subjects that impact you, Talk of the Town has a little something for everyone. Plus, we're on every day, so it's easy to catch up with us. That's Talk of the Town. Every day, every week, right here on C19 TV, Cleveland County's channel. Only on Tom Warner Cable. Good afternoon, Cleveland County. We are back talking about asparagus. We've just been in the field seeing where it grows and how to pick it. And we're in the studio today talking with Nancy Abassier-Kong, who is Cooperative Extension's Family and Consumer Science Specialist. And Nancy, we've seen the asparagus. Let's talk about how do we take care of it once, we've had, once we buy it from the farmer's market or pick it from our own garden. Okay. Yes, asparagus is a very nutritious food. It's a nutrient-dense vegetable. Uh, and when you're selecting, you will want to select uh, one that's firm, uh, not pliable or wilted, uh, a bright green color if you're selecting the green. Asparagus also comes in white and purple. Mm -hmm. But uh, most common, most of us will be using the green asparagus. Mm -hmm. So select, again, the bright color, uh, straight. It should not be, again, wilted and, and so forth. You don't want any that has any moldy or, you know, anything that looks blemished. Mm -hmm. And then once you bring it home, do you wash it and then put it in the refrigerator till you cook it? Or how, how would you recommend handling it once you get it home? Okay. Remember that the quality of asparagus uh, decreases rapidly. So you do want to use it within one to three days when you okay. bring it home. It does need to be stored in the refrigerator. Wait to wash it when you're ready to use it. Okay. So you that's sort of a uh, rule of thumb. That's right, mm -hmm. because you don't want anything wet that might mold and so forth. Correct. Uh, now, if it has sand on it, which, of course, you won't want to select asparagus that's dirty or sandy. But if it does, you could rinse that off before you put it in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Otherwise... Wrap a wet paper towel around oh, the base, good. the ends of the asparagus, okay. and place it in a plastic bag, and then put it in your vegetable crisper. Okay. And again, one to three days. Now, can you freeze asparagus? You can. You can freeze asparagus. Uh, and on our Cooperative Extension website, we will have um, some information and on the fact sheet, but it, you can blanch, you would blanch it if you're okay. going to freeze it. If there's small spears, two minutes, medium, three minutes, and so forth. Okay. Uh, then, of course, after you blanch, mm -hmm. water or steam blanched for the two minutes, let's say, for the small asparagus spears. Put it immediately into cold or ice water to stop the cooking. Take it out and drain, and then you're ready to package either in your bags, freezer weight bags, okay. or rigid containers. Do you not put it in cold water like you do corn or something? Yes, you would to chill. Right, right. So, so you take water, it out of the boiling, out of the boiling water. water, 
immediately into the cold or ice water. Right, right, right. Just to cool it, but it's not very large, so it won't take long. You're not really soaking. Right. Again, so then you take it out of that and drain. Mm hmm okay. Mm hmm All right. Well, there isn't much to taking care of good asparagus. You know how to pick it, how to select it, and what to do with it when you get home. And then in the kitchen, you're going to learn how to make asparagus soup and a very delicious cold salad with asparagus. Thank you, Nancy, for being with us today. We know how to select the correct asparagus and how to take care of it once we get home. Stay tuned, Cleveland County, because we will be in the kitchen cooking it with, I believe, asparagus soup and a cold asparagus salad. You'll want to stay and watch it. Welcome to the Shield Museum of Natural History. I'm Dr. Ann Tippett, Executive Director. Come explore the Shield Museum with your family where we will inspire wonder and appreciation for science and the natural world. The Shield Museum has been engaging visitors for over 50 years. Come see our planetarium, backcountry farm, Catawba Indian Village, live animals, nature trail, and many other exhibits. Come take a bite out of time at the Shield Museum. Welcome back, Cleveland County, to Cleveland County Kitchen. My name is Deborah Blanton, and I am here today with Nancy Fichter, who has been in the county about five years. Uh, her folks moved here about 15 years ago. Nancy has her master's in physical anthropology, but is, has moved into the kitchen based on all of her mother's good techniques that, that Nancy learned. And we are here, uh, as you're well aware, cooking asparagus this year, or this time. So here we are, Nancy, and what will you, what will you be doing for us today? Uh, well, thank you very much for this opportunity. This is awesome. But uh, today I'm going to be preparing uh, two dishes simultaneously to just kind of show you how simple, quick, and easy cooking can really be. Uh, I'm going to be preparing a asparagus salad with garlic and lemon vinaigrette. And that can be served either hot or cold. And then I'm also going to be preparing a cream of asparagus soup, which you can serve on its own, probably with some crusty bread on a warm, you know, on a cold day. Or you can freeze it or refrigerate it and use it in your soups, um, you know, or your casseroles. You know, we always have cream of asparagus uh, soup or cream of asparagus mushrooms um, that we use in a lot of different dishes. So... And, of course, that's very important because we're really at the end of asparagus season. So my suggestion would be get asparagus now and then prepare it and freeze it for winter. Yes. And it's, and it's such a neat vegetable. I mean, and it's, it's a true representation of spring because it's one of the first crops that come up. And it's been historically a symbol of fertility and rejuvenation. And we think of that um, in spring, mm -hmm. you know, as we're coming out of the cold winter. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to get started. And the first thing uh, you want to do is you're going to want to roast garlic. Now, it's one of those things that seems a little more intimidating than it really is. And what you need to do is just take a whole head of garlic, uh, remove most of that outer layer of, like, papery skin, Give it a cut on the um, edge and have all of the uh, actual segments showing. You're going to want to just take a pan of, uh, that you can roast in, put it in the pan, add some olive oil. And I've noticed you've, you've put the cut end up. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Cut end is up. Now, like I said, we're preparing two dishes simultaneously. And you're going to see I have a container over here where I'm going to put all my food scraps I am a total believer in a no-waste or minimal-waste kitchen. And so that means my scraps either end up in a homemade vegetable broth or in a compost pile, or as I, you'll see in um, 
multiple dishes. So for the cream of asparagus soup, we're going to also roast an onion. And again, we're just going to cut the top off to expose the inner flesh of the vegetable, remove some of the papery skin. Again, put it face up, a little bit of olive oil, some salt. Now, I mean, if you don't have to salt it. You know, I know that some people have problems with hypertension and stuff. But anyway, and then you stick it in the oven at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit uh, for about 30 to 40 minutes. It really depends on uh, your oven. And it will come out looking like this. Um, and the inner segments are going to be nice and soft. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's relatively warm, you can actually squish them out. But once it starts getting cold, it's a little more difficult to remove those segments just by squishing. So what you want to do, and it's not real difficult, is just start peeling it away like this. And then you just uh, remove your segments and you set them aside. Now, I've already prepared uh, some of the individual segments here. So, And then I also have the roasted onion, and you're going to have to remove that outer skin because you're not going to want that in your soup. Just like that. And so we have cloves of garlic, <clears throat> and, and then we have sections of onion. Yeah, and I'm going to put that onion, actually, just for sake of time, because I, I already have my blender here, I'm going to go ahead and put my onion in the blender because that's going to be one of the first ingredients for this soup. Okay. Then, um, second of all, you're going to want to prepare your asparagus. Now, <clears throat> asparagus is one of those uh, vegetables you don't need to do a full immersion when you're cleaning. Uh, what you want to do is you can either have a bucket of, I mean, a bowl of water or just under your faucet and just um, turn them upside down so those little florets, because you'll notice the flowers kind of grow up, um, and little bits of dirt and sand can get in there. Mm -hmm. So you want to rinse it that way and just kind of massage a little bit. Not too rough because they're pretty tender. Um, and then also you can, it's, it's not necessary. On older asparagus, I would recommend it, but on these, these are really young and really nice. Uh, you can take a vegetable peeler and peel off the, the bottom section and expose that tender um, stalk. But what I'm going to do here is most of the time the... Uh, very end of your asparagus is really woody. Uh, and if you try and cook with it, it's going to be really stringy and kind of hard. Uh, and believe me, I have tried. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what I do is I tend to chop off like a bit, about a, about a quarter of that off. And I use that in my compost or, again, in my uh, homemade stock. And then I take the next quarter, a little less than a quarter of, this, of the stalk, and I put it into a, a roasting pan, just like so. Um, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. And we're just going to set that aside. And we're going to take the remaining asparagus, which is a really nice, tender, and, and sweet part. And we're going to do the same thing in a roasting pan. But what we're going to add to this one, because this is what our salad calls for, is we're going to also use lemon zest. Now, this is about two pound, a total of two pounds of asparagus, and I'm obviously just showing a little bit of it. And I take the zest of one lemon. And the zest is prepared how? Uh, you take uh, the lemon, and I, I have a micro zester. Uh, you can use... Um, you, uh, some of the graters that you get, cheese graters, will actually have uh, a micro grater on it. And you just take the outer lemon and the grater and you go against. But it, it, it's the whole, the it's, it's outside the, the of whole the lemon. outside of the lemon. Okay. And you want to make sure that you don't get too much of the white because that's the bitter part. Right, right. Um, and so then, of course, you So add, and, how, and how much, well, we just saw just like a little, a yeah. little pinch of that. Yeah, the, the total recipe would call for the whole lemon to be oh, zested. Oh, oh, So you'd be okay. two pounds of asparagus, uh, whole lemon, zested. Okay. Uh, there's two cloves, two, two heads of garlic. Okay. Um, give or take, you know, two to four tablespoons of olive oil, depending how heavy you are. Right, right. You know, pinches of, of salt mm -hmm. and pinches of pepper. Now, this will be, again, 350, 400 degrees. Now, I tend to like my asparagus a 
little on the crunchier side. Mm -hmm. uh, so it takes about 10 minutes. Okay. But, you know, if you want it a little more crunchy, you don't have to do as much as 10 minutes. But some people like it really soft. Mm -hmm. And so you can you know, kind of wing it in how you really enjoy your food. And I might add that all of these recipes will be out on the website as well. Okay. So, and good. So what I'll do here is this will be popped into the oven. And I have some prepared. And remember, both of these, one with almost the ends, which is this one, and yep. then this is already yep. prepared. So those are going to be for our soup. Okay. And this is our uh, already roasted asparagus. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make the dressing, and this is so, so simple. Uh, you can use commercial lemon juice, but if you're already zesting one lemon, right. uh, go ahead and take the juice from that lemon. It's just... So much nicer, and if you have fresh asparagus, you want fresh lemon. Of course. Just create the whole Certainly. nice fresh springiness. So, and what I've done is, this is the juice of one lemon, and it's, it's just over a quarter of a cup. The recipe calls for a quarter. I have just over a quarter. And what I have here is some uh, chopped fresh garlic. It's about two cloves. Uh, it's, it calls for about two teaspoons, and I don't know. <laughs> If it's a little bit more, a little bit less, it's okay. Uh, and you can adjust the garlic flavor because this is a very garlicky. Um, but there again, recipe. these these amounts can all vary with, yep. with just your personal taste or your family's personal yep. taste. And so and I just have this in a jar and I shake it up. That's pretty oh. much all that is. Oh, that's great. Um, because you already have olive oil on the asparagus. Yes. You don't really need to add any more olive oil. I mean, mm -hmm. that'd probably be a bit excessive. Mm -hmm. Now, the dressing does also call for chives. But what I did is I took a spring onion from the community garden here in Shelby. Mm -hmm. And I've used that. Now, I've chopped that up uh, kind of roughly, but you can chop it up uh, a little more finer if you want to, if that's your personal taste. Uh, it also, what I've also done in the past, is I've done some wild foraging just in my backyard. Because, you know, during this time of year, you have those, like, wild onions. onions. Exactly. And they have a really great taste. If you've never done that before, oh. go and collect them. But they're tougher, so you're going to have to actually chop and make sure that and make you get them it fine. much more finer yes. than that yes so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go ahead and plate up so what you're going to do is you're going to take your asparagus now you can I, i'm doing this family style uh but you can more than do individuals i think it has six servings for um for the, the recipe that's online And this is going to be cold, uh, but if, in terms of time management, um, obviously do the roasting of the garlic and the onion first, which takes about 40 minutes. Uh, in that time, you can prepare your dressing, and you can prepare your asparagus. And then uh, once the garlic and onion comes out, let it sit aside to cool, and then put in your asparagus for that 10 minutes. By that time, the garlic should be, hand, be able to be handled. And mm -hmm. then you can probably just squeeze those um, garlic cloves uh -huh. out. So, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the vinaigrette. I probably won't put all of this on. Mm -hmm. And then you want to take uh, some fresh, your chives or your spring onions. Uh, these are those garlic cloves that we roasted and got out of their skin. I just love these things. There was a restaurant that I went to. I used to go to Michigan, and they would have us on the table with butter and fresh oh, bread. Oh, gracious sakes. Awesome. Oh. Uh, now, yep. I'm putting on pecans because that's what we have here. Um, and uh, f From Shelby, I believe they are. Mm -hmm. um, the original recipe calls for walnuts. But, again, this is one of those recipes that can be really versatile, really easy. If you don't like garlic, you can use onion. If you, you know, you can add a little other flavorings to it. If you have, I mean, probably lemon balm would be really nice in it. Even maybe some sage, oregano, whatever. And then same with nuts. I mean, it just all gives it a really different type of um, Well, they're, taste. They're, they're taste, they're different textures mm -hmm. in there. Yep. They're soft with the, with the garlic and... Yep. 
hard with the nuts. That's great. So that's what um, your salad looks like. Yeah. And then, like I said, the next one is, is very, very simple. It's almost embarrassing. So here I have my, <laughs> my onion. Uh -huh. I'm going to take my uh, asparagus, hopefully. Now, you really want to do this when the asparagus is uh, warm and right out because it will make them they'll be softer. They get a little, they harden a little bit in the refrigerator. Um, and you're going to take two cups of, I have chicken broth here, mm -hmm. uh, but you can use vegetable broth. And I... I use my own broth because, like I said, I, I tend to make my own. And then I have about a tablespoon of flour. And if you have issues with gluten, you can use cornstarch. I've actually thickened soups with potato flakes and beans. Um, okay. just, and not a whole lot. You don't want a whole lot. Okay. So, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to puree this. And it's going to be kind of loud. <laughs> so, okay. let me just step back. I might add that the chicken broth came in a container if you just want to go to the store. It's such a pretty color. I love green. But anyway. So that is probably what? Two or three, two minutes probably. Yes. And I mean, I may have, you know, may have jacked it up a little bit more. Like I said, it's best to do this when it's warm because it's easier for the asparagus. Um, now you can serve it just like this. I would go ahead and um, put it on the stove top, warm it through, get it nice and, nice and hot. And then you can do individual servings or again, family style, which I have here. And I've just taken some of the chives um, that I had, I'm mean, sorry, some of the spring onion and I sprinkled it on top. So, I mean, that in itself with some warm bread would be a great meal. Oh, absolutely. So, uh, but like I said, and, and there's no cream in it, even though it's called cream of, cream of mm -hmm. asparagus soup. There's mm -hmm. no cream in it. So, so it's uh, just the asparagus. Yeah, so very low in calorie, very healthy. Now, those end bits of the asparagus, um, I think my, my uncle's about frugal as I am, or even more frugal, and I was talking to him about this. And what he does, and this is a... Um, a great way to hide vegetables. And what he does is he takes the, the cooked, very tender ends of the asparagus and he chops it up really finely or purees it and then adds it into like his meatloafs or of other course. kind of loaves or you know casseroles and stuff. And so they don't know they're eating it. Nobody right. knows. Like, you but they're like, getting the vitamins mm -hmm. and the fiber and all that included yep. in the vegetable. Or you can add it in... Uh, to soups, like with your minestrone soup or something mm -hmm, like that. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of different ways to use nearly the entire vegetable. Well, Nancy, I want to thank you um, on behalf of Cleveland County Kitchen for sharing your expertise. Uh, we have a delicious soup and we have a delicious asparagus salad. Well, thank you, thank uh, you. for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.